It is certainly possible, but our body does its best to keep our core temperature about 37 degrees. And our lungs are encased within our thoracic cavity. So unless your whole body is at risk of freezing, and you know that would be near death experience or death experience, your, your lungs themselves can't freeze. Our bodies are very well designed to adapt to cold air coming in. And um, there's many mechanisms that allow for warming and humidification of that air before it actually hits your, your lungs where a gas exchange happens. So what happens is that cold air is generally drier and your body works to um, humidify this. And in that process, it can cause irritation to the lining of the airways and, and the lungs themselves, uh, which results in a process called bronchospasm where those airways narrow and tighten and you get that feeling of shortness of breath. If you're going to breathe in, generally breathing in through your nose and exhaling through your mouth is better. Your nose does, does a better job at humidifying and warming the air than your mouth. Having a scarf to wrap around your nose and mouth or a ski mask or something like that, uh, and when you breathe out, can trap some of that heat and moisture, which can be helpful. Patients with respiratory disease, whether that's asthma, COPD, or other lung diseases, are more prone to have exacerbations of their symptoms if facing cold, uh, cold air during these cold fronts and winters. So the, the best thing that they can do in order to protect themselves is to be prepared, whether that's having you know, an extra supply of your inhaler regimen for a few days in case of an emergency, or having a, an emergency generator for their medical equipment, such as you know, ventilators, CPAP machines, or oxygen concentrators, 